Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's say we have the same window we had on the previous video, but now we're going to change the inner layer. What's required of us to change the heat flow from what was in the previous video, 50 watts, to only 25 watts. So how thick does the layer need to be in order to accomplish that? Remember that in the previous video, this was one centimeter. Now we're going to try to figure out how thick that layer needs to be in order to bring the heat flow down to half of what it was before, 25 watts. Which means we have to solve the equation for delta x2. How do we do that? Well, let's cross multiply. And so we end up on the left side. We end up with, um, well, let's come over here. So we have delta x1 divided by, and those sounds that you're hearing is our new little puppy, that's dreaming right now. It must be chasing a, a squirrel or something in his sleep. <laughs> okay, let's continue with our problem here. So we're cross multiplying. So on the left side, we end up delta x1 times k1a. Notice that the cross section areas are the same for all. So we need delta x2 divided by k2a plus delta x3 divided by k3a, and that must equal the difference in the temperature between the inside and the outside, and the heat flow. And of course, the new heat flow is going to be 25. Now we need to move these other two terms to the right side, so we end up with delta x2 divided by k2a is equal to delta t divided by q dot minus delta x1 divided by k1a minus delta x3 divided by k3a and finally delta x2 is going to be equal to let's see we have to cross multiply so k2a multiplied times delta t q dot divided by q dot minus delta x1 divided by k1a minus delta x3 divided by k3a so there it is. That's the equation we're going to need. Now we need to plug in the values to get delta x2. K2, that's the heat conductivity. Oh, I erased it, but I remember for glass, that was going to be 0.026, cross-section area is 1, times the delta T was 20 centigrade degrees, divided by Q dot, we're now changing that to 25 watts instead of 50 minus delta x1, which is 0 0.005, that's half a centimeter converted to meters, k is going to be 0 0.8, and the cross-section area is 1, and again we have another pane on the other side, 0 0.8 times 1. Okay, with a calculator we should be able to figure out what that is equal to. So let's add those two together. So we have 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.8. Hmm. And then we multiply times 2, because there's two of those. And we subtract that from 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.8 times 2. Minus plus 20 divided by 20.5. 20, 20 divided by 25, that's 0.8 equals. Now we multiply it times 0 0.026 equals, and there it is. Ah, that means 0 0.02, so delta x2 is equal to 0 0.02, and of course we're using standard units, so that's meters, converted to centimeters would be 2 centimeters, which means that when the layer was 1 centimeter in between, the heat conductivity gave us a heat flow of um, 50 watts, and then when we doubled the width from 1 centimeter to 2 centimeters, the heat flow went down to 25 watts. It's kind of interesting that a doubling of the width of the air alone, keeping grass, the glass panes the same, changed the heat flow to one half of what it was before. So doubling the thickness of the air caused one half of the heat flow. So that's kind of interesting. That means that almost all of the Resistance to the heat flow comes from the air and almost none of it from the 
panes of glass themselves and so simply double the width, the width of, the, of the air in between simply dropped the heat flow to half. It's kind of interesting but that is how it's done. Again remember we ignored convection in case you're wondering about that that comes later in a different series. That's how it is.